In the days following the Boston Marathon bombing, a Florida Chechen immigrant named Ibrahim Todashev was shot and killed by the FBI. Law enforcement officers had been interrogating Todashev for his alleged relationship with Boston bombing suspect Tamerlan Sarnayev. FBI authorities claimed that Todashev turned violent and was killed by officers in an act of self-defense. But Todashev's family has long claimed that that was cold murder, a man shot dead despite being completely unarmed. But the pursuit and interrogation has seemed to extend past just Todashev's involvement. His family is now accusing U.S. authorities of mounting a campaign of, quote, intimidation and harassment against Todashev's associates. To break down the very latest, I'm joined by RT's Anastasia Cherkina, who has been following this story very closely. Anastasia, what do we know about the friends of Todashev who are allegedly being intimidated here? Well, Amira, the two, the first person we're talking about is Tatiana Gruzdeva, a 20-year-old who's said to have been Ibrahim's roommate, lover, and uh, girlfriend, uh, the, the way she describes their relationship. We do know that she had attended uh, one of the voluntary interviews with the FBI prior to his killing. She was deported from the United States this weekend and is now back home in Moldova uh, after spending several weeks at an immigration detention center in Florida. Now, prior to that, this summer, she has also spent several months behind bars for uh, having been uh, staying in the U.S. after her U.S. visa visa to the U.S. expired. And uh, uh, the reason that she's been talked about as uh, a person being intimidated and harassed is largely said to be because she had given an interview about Ibrahim, because she spoke to the media about him, describing him as a good person, and she herself has said that she believes that this is why she's being harassed. This is also an opinion shared by Ibrahim's family, including his father, and also the Council of American Islamic on uh, American Islamic relations, who has been closely following this case and has providing has been providing uh, a lot of legal assistance to the Tadashev family. The second person is Ashur Mahmoud Miraliev, a 20-year-old whom we've ha we have actually met when we interviewed the father of Ibrahim. He has been in jail since September 18th after being charged with tampering with a witness in a battery case involving Tadashev. He's, however, not linked uh, at all to the Boston bombings or the FBI. So both of these people, 20-year-olds friends of Ibrahim. They both were refused lawyers, and uh, uh, the young man in one case is detained uh, on a federal detainer, meaning he won't be released until a federal agency decides uh, this might be the case. And how involved have these friends uh, been in the investigation uh, into the circumstances of Todashev's death? Well, uh, obviously they were close with him. Uh, uh, in terms of the death, we do know, in terms of the investigation, we do know, of course, that, like I said, that the girlfriend had attended uh, uh, interviews with him uh, and had a close relationship with him. The, the young man, uh, we met him when uh, Ibrahim Tadash's father, Abdul Baki, was in Florida trying to uh, push for investigation in terms of what kind of uh, uh, reasoning was behind the brutal murder of his son. The young man was uh, helping the father, who doesn't speak English, driving him around. Uh, it's uh, likely to say that they were kind of living together and the father was staying with him. So uh, they were certainly very close, but in terms of how, how far they went into the investigation is unclear because we, of course, do know that the FBI keeps any results if they have any under wraps, uh, as well as CARE, the organization that has been helping the family, are waiting for official results to be announced in order to go ahead and kind of talk more and bring more light and uh, uh, launch any potential civil legal action in this case. And Anastasia, I know that you had the chance uh, a while back to speak to Tadashev's father. Uh, he is convinced that his son was murdered by the FBI. What exactly does he think happened? Well, uh, Amira, he basically says that uh, what happened to his son was a cold-blooded murder. He has these gruesome uh, photos of uh, his dead son with uh, bullets in his chest, and uh, uh, we do know that he was also shot in his head. And uh, certainly, he's just completely flabbergasted by what happened. Certainly, in, ter in terms of this latest, what they call intimidation and uh, harassment of the friends, he's not surprised, really, after what happened to his son. Because uh, when, when we saw him in August, he was in Florida to try to get answers, and it's been months, and still he he has not heard any kind of official reasoning, although uh, he has been saying that officials did promise to keep him in the loop. He has now returned to uh, Chechnya, to his uh, hometown Grozny, and has been waiting for more results. But uh, nothing has really been coming out, and this uh, heartbroken father, including the rest of the family, are just waiting for the officials to say something. And how is the FBI responding to all of this? 
Well, you know, Amira, it's curious that the FBI has not commented on the deportation of the roommate or the, the, the girlfriend, uh, Tatiana. They have also not commented on these allegations of intimidation and harassment. They keep saying that an investigation is ongoing, that uh, they are working on bringing more light on this case, but organizations such as CARE, following the story closely, believe that uh, the FBI is very unlikely to obviously police themselves and are not really expecting many results. It is worth mentioning that uh, two other separate investigations in, in this case are going on. The Department of Justice is carrying out one and also uh, the state attorney for the Orlando area. So uh, likely that some more light will be shed, even though many have lots of doubts considering how murky this case has been since the killing of Ibrahim took place on May 22nd. Well, it's certainly very mysterious. We're going to continue to follow it. Thank you so much for all of your great reporting. That was RT correspondent Anastasia Turgenev.